Kenya. Coordinates, 1 degree north 38 degrees east, 1 degree north 38 degrees east, 1, 38. Kenya, slash KNJ slash, listen, officially the Republic of Kenya, Swahili, Uriya Kenya, is a country in Africa with 47 semi-autonomous counties governed by elected governors. At 580,367 square kilometers, 224,081 square miles, Kenya is the world's 48th largest country by total area. With a population of more than 52.2 million people, Kenya is the 27th most populous country. Kenya's capital and largest city is Nairobi while its oldest city and first capital is the coastal city of Mombasa. Kisumu City is the third largest city and also an inland port on Lake Victoria. Other important urban centers include Nakuru and Eldoret. Kenya is bordered by South Sudan to the northwest, Ethiopia to the north, Somalia to the east, Uganda to the west, Tanzania to the south and the Indian Ocean to the southeast. Nilotic-speaking pastoralists, ancestral to Kenya's Nilotic speakers, started migrating from present-day southern Sudan into Kenya around 500 BC. European colonization of Kenya began in the 19th century during the European exploration of the interior. The modern-day Kenya emerged from a protectorate established by the British Empire in 1895 and the subsequent Kenya colony, which began in 1920. Numerous disputes between the UK and the colony led to the Mau Mau Revolution, which began in 1952, and the subsequent Declaration of Independence in 1963. After independence, Kenya remained a member of the Commonwealth of Nations. The current constitution was adopted in 2010 to replace the 1963 Independence Constitution. Kenya is a presidential representative democratic republic, in which elected officials represent the people and the president is the head of state and government. Kenya is a member of United Nations, World Bank, International Monetary Fund, Kamesa, and other international organizations. With a GNI of 1,460, Kenya is a lower middle income economy. Kenya's economy is the largest in Eastern and Central Africa. With Nairobi serving as a major regional commercial hub. Agriculture is the largest sector, tea and coffee are traditional cash crops, while fresh flowers are a fast growing export. The service industry is also a major economic driver, particularly tourism. Kenya is a member of the East African Community Trade Bloc, though some international trade organizations categorize it as part of the Greater Horn of Africa. Africa is Kenya's largest export market, followed by the European Union. Etymology The Republic of Kenya is named after Mount Kenya. The earliest recorded version of the modern name was written by German explorer Johann Ludwig Krapf in the 19th century. While traveling with a Kamba caravan led by the legendary long-distance trader chief Kivoy, Kraft spotted the mountain peak and asked what it was called. Kivoy told him Kenaya or Kimakinya probably because the pattern of black rock and white snow on its peaks reminded them of the feathers of the cock ostrich. The Ajikuyu, who inhabit the slopes of Mount Kenya, call it Kiramakiranyaga and Kikuyu, while the Ambu call it Kiranyaa. All three names have the same meaning. Ludwig Kraft recorded the name as both Kenya and Kignia. Others say that this was, on the contrary, a very precise notation of a correct African pronunciation slash KNJ slash. An 1882 map drawn by Joseph Thompsons, a Scottish geologist and naturalist, indicated Mount Kenya as Mount Kenya, 1862. The mountain's name was accepted, pars pro toto, as the name of the country. It did not come into widespread official use during the early colonial period, when the country was instead referred to as the East African Protectorate. It was changed to the colony of Kenya in 1920. History Prehistory Fossils found in Kenya suggest that primates roamed the area more than 20 million years ago. Recent findings near Lake Turkana indicate that hominids such as Homo habilis, 1.8 and 2.5 million years ago, and Homo erectus, 1.9 million to 350,000 years ago, are possible direct ancestors of modern Homo sapiens, and lived in Kenya in the Pleistocene epoch. During excavations at Lake Turkana in 1984, paleoanthropologist Richard Leakey assisted by Kamoya Kimu discovered the Turkana boy, a 1.6 million year old fossil belonging to Homo erectus. Previous research on early hominids is particularly identified with Mary Leakey and Louis Leakey, who were responsible for the preliminary archaeological research at Olorga Ailey in Hyrax Hill. Later work at the former site was undertaken by Glenn Isaac. Neolithic the first inhabitants of present-day Kenya were hunter-gatherer groups, 
akin to the modern Khoisan speakers. These people were later replaced by agro-pastoralist Cushitic speakers from the Horn of Africa. During the early Holocene, the regional climate shifted from dry to wetter climatic conditions, providing an opportunity for the development of cultural traditions, such as agriculture and herding, in a more favorable environment. Around 500 BC, Nilotic-speaking pastoralists, ancestral to Kenya's Nilotic speakers, started migrating from present-day southern Sudan into Kenya. Nilotic groups in Kenya include the Kalenjin, Samburu, Luo, Turkana, Masai. By the first millennium AD, Bantu-speaking farmers had moved into the region. The Bantus originated in West Africa along the Benue River in what is now eastern Nigeria and western Cameroon. The Bantu migration brought new developments in agriculture and iron working to the region. Bantu groups in Kenya include the Kikuyu, Luya, Kamba, Kisi, Meru, Kuria, Imbu, Embir, Watawaita Watawaita, Wapokomo and Mijikenda among others. Remarkable prehistoric sites in the interior of Kenya include the archaeoastronomical site Namuratanga on the west side of Lake Turkana in the walled settlement of Thimlich Ohinga in Migori County. Swahili Culture and Trade 1st century 19th century. The Kenyan coast had served host to communities of iron workers and communities of Bantu subsistence farmers, hunters and fishers who supported the economy with agriculture, fishing, metal production and trade with foreign countries. These communities formed the earliest city-states in the region which were collectively known as Azania. By the 1st century CE, many of the city-states such as Mombasa, Malindi, and Zanzibar began to establish trade relations with Arabs. This led to the increased economic growth of the Swahili states, introduction of Islam, Arabic influences on the Swahili Bantu language, cultural diffusion, as well as the Swahili city-states becoming a member of a larger trade network. Many historians had long believed that the city-states were established by Arab or Persian traders, but archaeological evidence has led scholars to recognize the city-states as an indigenous development which, though subjected to foreign influence due to trade, retained a Bantu cultural core. The Kilwa Sultanate was a medieval sultanate, centered at Kilwa in modern-day Tanzania. At its height, its authority stretched over the entire length of the Swahili coast, including Kenya. It was said to be founded in the 10th century by Ali ibn al-Hassan Shirazi, a Persian sultan from Shiraz in southern Iran. However, scholars have suggested that claims of Arab or Persian origin of city-states were attempts by the Swahili to legitimize themselves both locally and internationally. Since the 10th century, rulers of Kilwa would go on to build elaborate coral mosques and introduce copper coinage. The Swahili built Mombasa into a major port city and established trade links with other nearby city-states as well as commercial centers in Persia, Arabia, and even India. By the 15th century, Portuguese voyager Duarte Barbosa claimed that Mombasa is a place of great traffic and has a good harbor in which there are always moored small craft of many kinds and also great ships, both of which are bound from Sofala and others which come from Kambe and Malint and others which sail to the island of Zanzibar. Later on in the 17th century, once the Swahili coast was conquered and came under direct rule of Omani Arabs, the slave trade was expanded by the Omani Arabs to meet the demands of plantations in Oman and Zanzibar. Initially these traders came mainly from Oman, but later many came from Zanzibar, such as Tipu Tip. In addition, the Portuguese started buying slaves from the Omani and Zanzibari traders in response to the interruption of the transatlantic slave trade by British abolitionists. Swahili, a Bantu language with Arabic, Persian, and other Middle Eastern and South Asian loanwords, later developed as a lingua franca for trade between the different peoples. Swahili now also has loanwords from English. Throughout the centuries, the Kenyan coast has played host to many merchants and explorers. Among the cities that line the Kenyan coast is the city of Malindi. It has remained an important Swahili settlement since the 14th century and once rivaled Mombasa for dominance in the African Great Lakes region. Malindi has traditionally been a friendly port city for foreign powers. In 1414, the Chinese trader and explorer Zheng He representing the Ming dynasty visited the East African coast on one of his last treasure voyages. Malindi authorities welcomed the Portuguese explorer Vasco da Gama in 1498. British Kenya, 1888-1962 The colonial history of Kenya dates from the establishment of a German protectorate over the Sultan of Zanzibar's coastal possessions in 1885, 
followed by the arrival of the Imperial British East Africa Company in 1888. Imperial rivalry was prevented when Germany handed its coastal holdings to Britain in 1890. This was followed by the building of the Uganda Railway passing through the country. The building of the railway was resisted by some ethnic groups, notably the Nandi led by Orca Iot Poi Taylor Op Samiai for 10 years from 1890 to 1900, however the British eventually built the railway. The Nandi were the first ethnic group to be put in a native reserve to stop them from disrupting the building of the railway. During the railway construction era, there was a significant inflow of Indian people, who provided the bulk of the skilled manpower required for construction. They and most of their descendants later remained in Kenya and formed the core of several distinct Indian communities such as the Ismaili Muslim and Sikh communities. While building the railway through Savo, a number of the Indian railway workers and local African laborers were attacked by two lions known as the Savo Maneaters. At the outbreak of World War I in August 1914, the governors of British East Africa, as the Protectorate was generally known, and German East Africa agreed a truce in an attempt to keep the young colonies out of direct hostilities. Lieutenant Colonel Paul von Lettow Vorbeck took command of the German military forces, determined to tie down as many British resources as possible. Completely cut off from Germany, von Lettow conducted an effective guerrilla warfare campaign, living off the land, capturing British supplies, and remaining undefeated. He eventually surrendered in northern Rhodesia, today Zambia, 14 days after the armistice was signed in 1918. To chase von Lettow, the British deployed the British Indian Army troops from India but needed large numbers of porters to overcome the formidable logistics of transporting supplies far into the interior on foot. The Carrier Corps was formed and ultimately mobilized over 400,000 Africans, contributing to their long-term politicization. In 1920, the East Africa Protectorate was turned into a colony and renamed Kenya for its highest mountain. During the early part of the 20th century, the interior central highlands were settled by British and other European farmers, who became wealthy farming coffee and tea. One depiction of this period of change from one colonist's perspective is found in the memoir Out of Africa by Danish author Baroness Karen von Blixen Fienica, published in 1937. By the 1930s, approximately 30,000 white settlers lived in the area and gained a political voice because of their contribution to the market economy. The Central Highlands were already home to over a million members of the Kikuyu people, most of whom had no land claims in European terms and lived as itinerant farmers. To protect their interests, the settlers banned the growing of coffee, introduced a hut tax, and the landless were granted less and less land in exchange for their labor. A massive exodus to the cities ensued as their ability to provide a living from the land dwindled. There were 80,000 white settlers living in Kenya in the 1950s. Throughout World War II, Kenya was an important source of manpower and agriculture for the United Kingdom. Kenya itself was the site of fighting between Allied forces and Italian troops in 1940-41 when Italian forces invaded. Wajir and Malindi were bombed as well. In 1952, Princess Elizabeth and her husband Prince Philip were on holiday at the Treetops Hotel in Kenya when her father, King George VI, died in his sleep. The young princess cut short her trip and returned home immediately to take her throne. She was crowned Queen Elizabeth II at Westminster Abbey in 1953 and as British hunter and conservationist Jim Corbett, who accompanied the royal couple, put it, she went up a tree in Africa a princess and came down a queen. Mau Mau Uprising From October 1952 to December 1959, Kenya was in a state of emergency arising from the Mau Mau rebellion against British rule. The Mau Mau, also known as the Kenya Land and Freedom Army, were primarily members of the Kikuyu group. The governor requested and obtained British and African troops, including the King's African Rifles. The British began counterinsurgency operations. In May 1953, General Sir George Erskine took charge as Commander-in-Chief of the colony's armed forces, with the personal backing of Winston Churchill. The capture of War Uyuatot, also known as General China, on January 15, 1954 and the subsequent interrogation led to a better understanding of the Mau Mau command structure for the British. Operation Anvil opened on April 24, 1954, after weeks of planning by the Army with the approval of the War Council. The operation effectively placed Nairobi under military siege. Nairobi's occupants were screened and the Mau Mau supporters moved to detention camps. The Home Guard formed the core of the government's strategy as it was composed of loyalist Africans, not foreign forces such as the British Army and King's African Rifles. 
By the end of the emergency, the Home Guard had killed 4,686 Mau Mau, amounting to 42% of the total insurgents. The capture of Dedan Kamathi on October 21, 1956 in Nyeri signified the ultimate defeat of the Mau Mau and essentially ended the military offensive. During this period, substantial governmental changes to land tenure occurred. The most important of these was the Swinnerton Plan, which was used to both reward loyalists and punish Mau Mau. Independence The first direct elections for native Kenyans to the Legislative Council took place in 1957. Despite British hopes of handing power to moderate local rivals, it was the Kenya African National Union KANU, of Jomo Kenyatta that formed a government. The colony of Kenya and the protectorate of Kenya each came to an end on December 12, 1963 with independence being conferred on all of Kenya. The United Kingdom ceded sovereignty over the colony of Kenya. The Sultan of Zanzibar agreed that simultaneous with independence for the colony of Kenya, the Sultan would cease to have sovereignty over the protectorate of Kenya so that all of Kenya would be one sovereign, independent state. In this way, Kenya became an independent country under the Kenya Independence Act 1963 of the United Kingdom. Exactly 12 months later on December 12, 1964, Kenya became a republic under the name Republic of Kenya. Concurrently, the Kenyan army fought the shift of war against ethnic Somali rebels inhabiting the northern frontier district, who wanted to join their kin in the Somali Republic to the north. A ceasefire was eventually reached with the signature of the Arusha Memorandum in October 1967, but relative insecurity prevailed through 1969. To discourage further invasions, Kenya signed a defense pact with Ethiopia in 1969, which is still in effect. The First President of Kenya on December 12, 1964 the Republic of Kenya was proclaimed, and Jomo Kenyatta became Kenya's first president. Under Kenyatta, corruption became widespread throughout the government, civil service, and business community. Kenyatta and his family were tied up with this corruption as they enriched themselves through the mass purchase of property after 1963. Their acquisitions in the Central, Rift Valley, and Coast provinces aroused great anger among landless Kenyans. His family used his presidential position to circumvent legal or administrative obstacles to acquiring property. The Kenyatta family also heavily invested in the coastal hotel business, with Kenyatta personally owning the Leonard Beach Hotel. He ruled until his death on August 22, 1978. Mwa era Mwa was Kenya's president from 1978 to 2002. At Kenyatta's death in 1978, Daniel Arap Mwa became president. Daniel Arap Mwa retained the presidency, being unopposed in elections held in 1979, 1983, SNAP elections, and 1988, all of which were held under the single-party constitution. The 1983 elections were held a year early, and were a direct result of an abortive military coup attempt on August 2, 1982. The abortive coup was masterminded by a low-ranked Air Force serviceman, Senior Private Hezekiah Ochuka, and was staged mainly by enlisted men in the Air Force. The putsch was quickly suppressed by forces commanded by Chief of General Staff Mahmoud Mohammed, a veteran Somali military official. They included the General Service Unit, GSUA paramilitary wing of the police, and later the regular police. On the heels of the Garissa Massacre of 1980, Kenyan troops committed the Wagala Massacre in 1984 against thousands of civilians in Wajir County. An official probe into the atrocities was later ordered in 2011. The election held in 1988 saw the advent of the Mulongo queuing system, where voters were supposed to line up behind their favored candidates instead of a secret ballot. This was seen as the climax of a very undemocratic regime and it led to widespread agitation for constitutional reform. Several contentious clauses, including one that allowed for only one political party, were changed in the following years. Birth of multi-party politics and the demise of Mwa era Kenya became a multi-party state in 1991 after 26 years of being a single-party state. On October 28, 1992, President Mwa dissolved parliament, five months before the end of his term. As a result, preparations began for all elective seats in parliament as well as the president. The elections were scheduled to take place on December 7, 1992, but delays led to its postponement to 29th of December the same year. Apart from Kanu, the ruling party, other parties represented in the elections included Ford Kenya and Ford Asali. This election was marked by large-scale intimidation of opponents, 
as well as harassment of election officials. It resulted in an economic crisis propagated by ethnic violence as the president was accused of rigging electoral results to sustain power. This election was a turning point for Kenya as it signified the beginning of the end of Mwa's leadership and the rule of Kanu. Mwa retained the presidency and George Saitoti became the vice president. Although it retained power, Kanu won 100 seats and lost 88 seats to the six opposition parties. The elections of 1992 mark at the beginning of multi-party politics after more than 25 years rule by Kanu. Following the skirmishes in the aftermath of the 1992 multi-party elections, 5,000 people were killed and a further 75,000 others displaced from their homes. In the next five years, many political alliances were formed in preparation for the next elections. In 1994, Jaramogi Oginga Odinga died and several coalitions joined his Ford Kenya party to form a new party called United National Democratic Alliance. However, this party was plagued with disagreements. In 1995, Richard Leakey formed the Safina party, but it was denied registration until November 1997. In 1996, Kanu revised the constitution to allow Mwa to remain president for another term. Subsequently, Mwa stood for re-election and won a fifth term in 1997. His win was strongly criticized by his major opponents, Kabaki and Odinka as being fraudulent. Following this win, Mwa was constitutionally barred from vying for another presidential term at the end of his term. Beginning in 1998, Mwa attempted to influence the country's succession politics to have Uhuru Kenyatta elected in the upcoming 2002 elections. President Kabaki and the Road to a New Constitution Mwa's plan to be replaced by Uhuru Kenyatta failed, and Mwa Kabaki, running for the opposition coalition National Rainbow Coalition NARC, was elected president. Anderson, 2003, reports the elections were judged free and fair by local and international observers, and seemed to mark a turning point in Kenya's democratic evolution. In 2005, Kenyans rejected a plan to replace the 1963 independence constitution with a new one. As a result, the elections of 2007 happened following the old constitution. Kabaki was re-elected in a highly contested political scene which was marked by political and ethnic violence. This resulted from accusations by the main opposition leader, Ryle Odinka, that the election results were rigged and that he was the rightfully elected president. As a result, 1,500 people were killed and another 600,000 were internally displaced, making it the worst post-election violence in Kenya. To stop the death and displacement of people, Kabaki and Raila agreed to work together, with the latter taking the position of a prime minister. This made Raila the second prime minister of Kenya. In July 2010, Kenya partnered with other East African countries to form the new East African Common Market within the East African community. In August 2010, Kenyans held a referendum and passed a new constitution, which limited presidential powers and devolved the central government. Devolution of government and separation of powers Following the passage of the new constitution, Kenya became a presidential representative democratic republic, whereby the president of Kenya is both head of state and head of government, and of a multi-party system. The new constitution also states that executive powers are exercised by the executive branch of government, headed by the president, who chairs the cabinet, that is composed of people chosen from outside parliament. Legislative power is vested exclusively in Parliament. The judiciary is independent of the executive and the legislature. Mwai Kabaki became the first president to serve under this new constitution while Uhuru Kenyatta became the first president elected under this constitution. In 2011, Kenya began sending troops to Somalia to fight the Islamic terror group, Al-Shabaab. In mid-2011, two consecutive missed rainy seasons precipitated the worst drought in East Africa seen in 60 years. The northwestern Turkana region was especially affected, with local schools shut down as a result. The crisis was reportedly over by early 2012 because of coordinated relief efforts. Aid agencies subsequently shifted their emphasis to recovery initiatives, including digging irrigation canals and distributing plant seeds. In 2013, Kenya had its first general elections after the new constitution had been passed. Uhuru Kenyatta won in a disputed election result, leading to a petition by the opposition leader, Raila Odinga. The Supreme Court upheld the election results and President Kenyatta began his term with William Ruto as the deputy president. Despite the outcome of this ruling, the Supreme Court and the head of the Supreme Court were seen as a powerful institutions that could carry out its role of checking the powers of the president. 
In 2017, Uhuru Kenyatta won a second term in office in another disputed election. Following the defeat, Raila Odinga again petitioned the results in the Supreme Court accusing the Electoral Commission of mismanagement of the elections and Uhuru Kenyatta and his party of rigging. That the Supreme Court overturned the election results in what became a landmark ruling in Africa and one of the very few in the world in which the results of a presidential elections were annulled. This ruling solidified the position of the Supreme Court as an independent body. Consequently, Kenya had a second round of elections for the presidential position, in which Uhuru emerged the winner after Raila refused to participate citing irregularities. Geography and Climate At 580,367 square kilometers, 224,081 square miles, Kenya is the world's 47th largest country, after Madagascar. It lies between latitudes 5 degrees north and 5 degrees south and longitudes 34 degrees and 42 degrees east. From the coast on the Indian Ocean, the low plains rise to central highlands. The highlands are bisected by the Great Rift Valley, with a fertile plateau lying to the east. The Kenyan highlands are one of the most successful agricultural production regions in Africa. The highlands are the site of the highest point in Kenya and the second highest peak on the continent, Mount Kenya, which reaches 5,199 meters 17,057 feet and is the site of glaciers. Mount Kilimanjaro, 5,895 meters or 19,341 feet, can be seen from Kenya to the south of the Tanzanian border. Climate Kenya's climate varies from tropical along the coast to temperate inland to arid in the north and northeast parts of the country. The area receives a great deal of sunshine every month, and summer clothes are worn throughout the year. It is usually cool at night and early in the morning inland at higher elevations. The long rain season occurs from March-April to May-June. The short rain season occurs from October to November-December. The rainfall is sometimes heavy and often falls in the afternoons and evenings. The temperature remains high throughout these months of tropical rain. The hottest period is February and March, leading into the season of the long rains, and the coldest is in July, until mid-August. Wildlife Kenya has considerable land area devoted to wildlife habitats, including the Maasai Mara, where blue wildebeest and other bovids participate in a large-scale annual migration. Top more than 1 million wildebeest and 200,000 zebras participate in the migration across the Mara River. The Big Five Game Animals of Africa, that is the lion, leopard, buffalo, rhinoceros, and elephant, can be found in Kenya and in the Maasai Mara in particular. A significant population of other wild animals, reptiles and birds can be found in the national parks and game reserves in the country. The annual animal migration occurs between June and September with millions of animals taking part, attracting valuable foreign tourism. Two million wildebeest migrate a distance of 2,900 kilometers 1,802 miles, from the Serengeti in neighboring Tanzania to the Maasai Mara in Kenya, in a constant clockwise fashion, searching for food and water supplies. The Serengeti migration of the wildebeest is a curious spectacle listed among the seven natural wonders of Africa. Government and Politics Kenya is a presidential representative democratic republic. The president is both the head of state and head of government, and of a multi-party system. Executive power is exercised by the government. Legislative power is vested in both the government and the National Assembly and the Senate. The judiciary is independent of the executive and the legislature. There was growing concern especially during former President Daniel Arap Mwa's tenure that the executive was increasingly meddling with the affairs of the judiciary. Kenya has a high degree of corruption according to Transparency International's Corruption Perception Index CPI, a metric which attempts to gauge the prevalence of public sector corruption in various countries. In 2012, the nation placed 139th out of 176 total countries in the CPI, with a score of 27 one hundredths. However, there are several rather significant developments with regards to curbing corruption from the Kenyan government, for instance, the establishment of a new and independent Ethics and Anti-Corruption Commission EACC. Following general elections held in 1997, the Constitution of Kenya Review Act designed to pave the way for more comprehensive amendments to the Kenyan Constitution was passed by the National Parliament. In December 2002, Kenya held democratic and open elections, which were judged free and fair by most international observers. The 2002 elections marked an important turning point in Kenya's democratic evolution and that power was transferred peacefully from the Kenya African National Union 
KANU, which had ruled the country since independence to the National Rainbow Coalition, NARC, a coalition of political parties. Under the presidency of Nwai Kabaki, the new ruling coalition promised to focus its efforts on generating economic growth, combating corruption, improving education, and rewriting its constitution. A few of these promises have been met. There is free primary education. In 2007, the government issued a statement declaring that from 2008, secondary education would be heavily subsidized, with the government footing all tuition fees. 2013 Elections and New Government under the new constitution and with President Kabaki prohibited by term limits from running for a third term, Deputy Prime Minister Uhuru Kenyatta ran for office. He won with 50.51% of the vote in March 2013. In December 2014, President Uhuru Kenyatta signed a security laws amendment bill, which supporters of the law suggested was necessary to guard against armed groups. Opposition politicians, human rights groups, and nine Western countries criticized the security bill, arguing that it infringed on democratic freedoms. The governments of the United States, the United Kingdom, Germany, and France also collectively issued a press statement cautioning about the law's potential impact. Through the Jubilee Coalition, the bill was later passed on 19 December in the National Assembly under acrimonious circumstances. Foreign Relations Kenya has close ties with its fellow Swahili-speaking neighbors in the African Great Lakes region. Relations with Uganda and Tanzania are generally strong, as the three nations work toward economic and social integration through common membership in the East African community. Relations with Somalia have historically been tense, although there has been some military coordination against Islamist insurgents. Kenya has good relations with the United Kingdom. Kenya is one of the most pro-American nations in Africa, and the wider world. With international criminal court trial dates scheduled in 2013 for both President Kenyatta and Deputy President William Ruto related to the 2007 election aftermath, U.S. President Barack Obama chose not to visit the country during his mid-2013 African trip. Later in the summer, Kenyatta visited China at the invitation of President Xi Jinping after a stop in Russia and not having visited the United States as president. In July 2015 Obama visited Kenya, the first American president to visit the country while in office. The Batuk is used for the training of British infantry battalions in the arid and rugged terrain of the Great Rift Valley. Armed Forces The Kenya Defense Forces are the armed forces of the Republic of Kenya. The Kenya Army, Kenya Navy and Kenya Air Force compose the National Defense Forces. The current Kenya Defense Forces were established, and its composition laid out, in Article 241 of the 2010 Constitution of Kenya, the KDF is governed by the Kenya Defense Forces Act of 2012. The President of Kenya is the Commander-in-Chief of all the armed forces. The armed forces are regularly deployed in peacekeeping missions around the world. Further, in the aftermath of the national elections of December 2007 and the violence that subsequently engulfed the country, a commission of inquiry, the Waki Commission, commended its readiness and adjudged it to have performed its duty well. Nevertheless, there have been serious allegations of human rights violations, most recently while conducting counterinsurgency operations in the Mount Elgin area and also in the district of Mandara Central. Kenya's armed forces, like many government institutions in the country, have been tainted by corruption allegations. Because the operations of the armed forces have been traditionally cloaked by the ubiquitous blanket of state security, the corruption has been hidden from public view, and thus less subject to public scrutiny and notoriety. This has changed recently. In what are by Kenyan standards unprecedented revelations, in 2010, credible claims of corruption were made with regard to recruitment and procurement of armored personnel carriers. Stop further, the wisdom and prudence of certain decisions of procurement have been publicly questioned. Administrative Divisions Kenya is divided into 47 semi-autonomous counties that are headed by governors. These 47 counties now form the first-order divisions of Kenya. The smallest administrative units in Kenya are called locations. Locations often coincide with electoral wards. Locations are usually named after their central villages slash towns. Many larger towns consist of several locations. Each location has a chief, appointed by the state. Constituencies are an electoral subdivision, with each county comprising a whole number of constituencies. An Interim Boundaries Commission was formed in year 2010 to review the constituencies and in its report, it recommended creation of an additional 80 constituencies. Previous to the 2013 elections, 
There were 210 constituencies in Kenya. Human rights. Homosexual acts are illegal in Kenya and punishable by up to 14 years in prison though the state often turns a blind eye on prosecuting homosexuals. According to 2013 survey by the Pew Research Center, 90% of Kenyans believe that homosexuality should not be accepted by society. While addressing a joint press conference together with President Barack Obama in 2015, President Kenyatta declined to assure Kenya's commitment to gay rights saying that the issue of gay rights is really a non-issue. But there are some things that we must admit we don't share. Our culture, our societies don't accept. In November 2008, WikiLeaks brought wide international attention to the Cry of Blood report. In the report, the Kenya National Commission on Human Rights KNCHR, reported these in their key finding e, stating that the forced disappearances and extrajudicial killings appear to be official policy sanctioned by the political leadership, the police. The police often shoot suspected gangsters in public as a new strategy to fight the rising levels of crime in the country in total disregard of the laws. Economy Kenya's macroeconomic outlook has steadily posted robust growth over the past few decades mostly from mega-infrastructure road and railway projects. However, much of this growth has come from cash flows diverted from ordinary Kenyan pockets at the microeconomic level through targeted monetary and fiscal measures coupled with poor management, corruption massive theft of public funds, over-legislation and an ineffective judiciary resulting in diminished incomes in ordinary households and small businesses, unemployment, underemployment and general discontent across multiple sectors. Kenya ranks poorly on the Fragile States Index at number 25 out of 178 countries ranked in 2019 and is placed in the alert category. In 2014, the country's macroeconomic indicators were rebased causing the GDP to shift upwards to low-middle-income country status. Kenya has a Human Development Index HDI, of 0.555, medium, ranked 145 out of 186 in the world. As of 2005, 17.7% of Kenyans lived on less than $1.25 a day. In 2017, Kenya ranked 92nd in the World Bank Ease of Doing Business rating from 113 RD in 2016, of 190 countries. The important agricultural sector is one of the least developed and largely inefficient, employing 75% of the workforce compared to less than 3% in the food secure developed countries. Kenya is usually classified as a frontier market or occasionally an emerging market, but it is not one of the least developed countries. The economy has seen much expansion seen by strong performance in tourism, higher education and telecommunications, and acceptable post-drought results in agriculture, especially the vital tea sector. Kenya's economy grew by more than 7% in 2007, and its foreign debt was greatly reduced. But this changed immediately after the disputed presidential election of December 2007, following the chaos which engulfed the country. Telecommunication and financial activity over the last decade now comprises 62% of GDP. 22% of GDP still comes from the unreliable agricultural sector which employs 75% of the labor force, a consistent characteristic of underdeveloped economies that have not attained food security, an important catalyst of economic growth, a small portion of the population relies on food aid. Industry and manufacturing is the smallest sector accounting for 16% of GDP. The service, industry and manufacturing sectors only employ 25% of the labor force but contribute 75% of GDP. Kenya also exports textiles worth over $400 million under AGOA. Privatization of state corporations like the defunct Kenya Post and Telecommunications Company, which resulted in East Africa's most profitable company, Safaricom, has led to their revival because of massive private investment. As of May 2011, economic prospects are positive with 4 to 5% GDP growth expected, largely because of expansions in tourism, telecommunications, transport, construction and a recovery in agriculture. The World Bank estimated growth of 4.3% in 2012. In March 1996, the presidents of Kenya, Tanzania, and Uganda re-established the East African Community EAC. The EEC's objectives include harmonizing tariffs and customs regimes, free movement of people, and improving regional infrastructures. In March 2004, the three East African countries signed a customs union agreement. 
Kenya has a relatively speaking a more developed financial services sector than its neighbors. The Nairobi Securities Exchange NSE, is ranked fourth in Africa in terms of market capitalization. The Kenyan banking system is supervised by the Central Bank of Kenya CBK. As of late July 2004, the system consisted of 43 commercial banks, down from 48 in 2001, several non-bank financial institutions, including mortgage companies, four savings and loan associations, and several core foreign exchange bureaus. Tourism Tourism in Kenya is the second largest source of foreign exchange revenue following agriculture. The Kenya Tourism Board is responsible for maintaining information pertaining to tourism in Kenya. The main tourist attractions are photo safaris through the 60 national parks and game reserves. Other attractions include the wildebeest migration at the Maasai Mara which is considered the seventh wonder of the world, historical mosques and colonial era forts at Mombasa, Malindi, and Lamu, the renowned vast scenery like the snow-white capped Mount Kenya, the Great Rift Valley, the tea plantations at Karago, the coffee plantations at Tika, a splendid view of Mount Kilimanjaro across the border into Tanzania, and the beaches along the Swahili coast, in the Indian Ocean. Tourists, the largest number being from Germany and the United Kingdom, are attracted mainly to the coastal beaches and the game reserves, notably, the expanse of East and Sava West National Park 20,808 square kilometers, 8,034 square miles, in the southeast. Agriculture Agriculture is the second largest contributor to Kenya's gross domestic product, GDP, after the service sector. In 2005 agriculture, including forestry and fishing, accounted for 24% of GDP, as well as for 18% of wage employment and 50% of revenue from exports. The principal cash crops are tea, horticultural produce, and coffee. Horticultural produce and tea are the main growth sectors and the two most valuable of all of Kenya's exports. The production of major food staples such as corn is subject to sharp weather-related fluctuations. Production downturns periodically necessitate food aid, for example, in 2004 aid for 1.8 million people because of one of Kenya's intermittent droughts. A consortium led by the International Crops Research Institute for the Semi-Arid Tropics ICRISAT, has had some success in helping farmers grow new pigeon pea varieties, instead of maize, in particularly dry areas. Pigeon peas are very drought resistant, so can be grown in areas with less than 650 mm annual rainfall. Successive projects encouraged the commercialization of legumes, by stimulating the growth of local seed production and agro-dealer networks for distribution and marketing. This work, which included linking producers to wholesalers, helped to increase local producer prices by 20 to 25 percent in Nairobi and Mombasa. The commercialization of the pigeon pea is now enabling some farmers to buy assets, ranging from mobile phones to productive land and livestock, and is opening pathways for them to move out of poverty. Tea, coffee, sisal, pyrethrum, corn, and wheat are grown in the fertile highlands, one of the most successful agricultural production regions in Africa. Dot livestock predominates in the semi-arid savanna to the north and east. Coconuts, pineapples, cashew nuts, cotton, sugarcane, sisal, and corn are grown in the lower-lying areas. Kenya has not attained the level of investment and efficiency in agriculture that can guarantee food security and coupled with resulting poverty. 53% of the population lives below the poverty line. A significant portion of the population regularly starves and is heavily dependent on food aid. Poor roads, an inadequate railway network, underused water transport and expensive air transport have isolated mostly arid and semi-arid areas and farmers in other regions often leave food to rot in the fields because they cannot access markets. This was last seen in August and September 2011 prompting the Kenyans for Kenya initiative by the Red Cross. Kenya's irrigation sector is categorized into three organizational types smallholder schemes, centrally managed public schemes and private-slash-commercial irrigation schemes. The smallholder schemes are owned, developed and managed by individuals or groups of farmers operating as water users or self-help groups. Irrigation is carried out on individual or on group farms averaging 0.1 to 0.4 hectares. There are about 3,000 smallholder irrigation schemes covering a total area of 47,000 hectares. The country has seven large, centrally managed irrigation schemes, namely Mwia, Bura, Ola, Perkera, West Kano, Banyala and Ahero covering a total commanded area of 18,200 hectares and averaging 2,600 hectares per scheme. 
These schemes are managed by the National Irrigation Board and account for 18% of irrigated land area in Kenya. Large-scale private commercial farms cover 45,000 hectares accounting for 40% of irrigated land. They utilize high technology and produce high-value crops for the export market, especially flowers and vegetables. Kenya is the world's third largest exporter of cut flowers. Roughly half of Kenya's 127 flower farms are concentrated around Lake Naivasha, 90 kilometers northwest of Nairobi. To speed their export, Nairobi Airport has a terminal dedicated to the transport of flowers and vegetables. Industry and Manufacturing Although Kenya is a low-middle-income country, manufacturing accounts for 14% of the GDP with industrial activity, concentrated around the three largest urban centers, Nairobi, Mombasa, Kisumu and is dominated by food processing industries such as grain milling, beer production, sugarcane crushing, and the fabrication of consumer goods, for example, vehicles from kits. There is a cement production industry. Kenya has an oil refinery that processes imported crude petroleum into petroleum products, mainly for the domestic market. In addition, a substantial and expanding informal sector commonly referred to as Juwakali engages in small-scale manufacturing of household goods, auto parts, and farm implements. Kenya's inclusion among the beneficiaries of the U.S. government's African Growth and Opportunity Act AGOA, has given a boost to manufacturing in recent years. Datsunsagoa took effect in 2000, Kenya's clothing sales to the United States increased from 44 million U.S. dollars to 270 million U.S. dollars. 2006. Other initiatives to strengthen manufacturing have been the new government's favorable tax measures, including the removal of duty on capital equipment and other raw materials. Transport. The country has an extensive network of paved and unpaved roads. Kenya's railway system links the nation's ports and major cities, connecting it with neighboring Uganda. There are 15 airports which have paved runways. Energy. The largest share of Kenya's electricity supply comes from geothermal energy followed by hydroelectric stations at dams along the upper Tana River, as well as the Turquoil Gorge Dam in the west. A petroleum-fired plant on the coast, geothermal facilities at Okaria, near Nairobi, and electricity imported from Uganda make up the rest of the supply. Kenya's installed capacity stood at 1,142 megawatts between 2001 and 2003. The state-owned Kenya Electricity Generating Company, Kengen, established in 1997 under the name of Kenya Power Company, handles the generation of electricity, while Kenya Power handles the electricity transmission and distribution system in the country. Dot shortfalls of electricity occur periodically, when drought reduces water flow. To become energy sufficient, Kenya aims to build a nuclear power plant by 2017. Kenya has proven deposits of oil in Turkana. Tulo Oil estimates Kenya's oil reserves to be around 1 billion barrels. Exploration is still continuing to determine if there are more reserves. Kenya currently imports all crude petroleum requirements. Kenya has no strategic reserves and relies solely on oil marketers' 21-day oil reserves required under industry regulations. Petroleum accounts for 20% to 25% of the national import bill. Overall Chinese Investment and Trade Published comments on Kenya's Capital FM website by Liu Guangyuan, China's ambassador to Kenya at the time of President Kenyatta's 2013 trip to Beijing, said, Chinese investment in Kenya, reached $474 million, representing Kenya's largest source of foreign direct investment, and, bilateral trade, reached $2.84 billion in 2012. Kenyatta was accompanied by 60 Kenyan business people, gained support from China for a planned $2.5 billion railway from the southern Kenyan port of Mombasa to neighboring Uganda, as well as a nearly $1.8 billion dam, according to a statement from the president's office also at the time of the trip. Base Titanium, a subsidiary of Base Resources of Australia, shipped its first major consignment of minerals to China. About 25,000 tons of ilmenite was flagged off the Kenyan coastal town of Kilifi. The first shipment was expected to earn Kenya about KSHS 1520 billion in earnings. Recently the Chinese contracted railway project from Nairobi to Mombasa was suspended due to dispute over compensation for land acquisition. Vision 2030 In 2007, the Kenyan government unveiled Vision 2030, an economic development program it hopes will put the country in the same league as the Asian Economic Tigers by the year 2030. In 2013, it launched a national climate change action plan, 
having acknowledged that emitting climate is a key development issue in Vision 2030 was an oversight. The 200-page action plan, developed with support from the Climate and Development Knowledge Network, sets out the government of Kenya's vision for a low-carbon climate resilient development pathway. At the launch in March 2013, the Secretary of the Ministry of Planning, National Development and Vision 2030 emphasized that climate would be a central issue in the renewed medium-term plan that would be launched in the coming months. This would create a direct and robust delivery framework for the action plan and ensure climate change is treated as an economy-wide issue. Oil Exploration Kenya has proven oil deposits in Turkana County. President Mwaikabaki announced on March 26, 2012 that Tulo Oil, an Anglo-Irish oil exploration firm, had struck oil but its commercial viability and subsequent production would take about three years to confirm. Early in 2006 Chinese President Hu Jintao signed an oil exploration contract with Kenya, part of a series of deals designed to keep Africa's natural resources flowing to China's rapidly expanding economy. The deal allowed for China's state-controlled offshore oil and gas company, TNUC, to prospect for oil in Kenya, which is just beginning to drill its first exploratory wells on the borders of Sudan and the disputed area of northeastern province of the border with Somalia and in coastal waters. There are formal estimates of the possible reserves of oil discovered. Child Labor and Prostitution Child labor is common in Kenya. Most working children are active in agriculture. In 2006, UNICEF estimated that up to 30% of girls in the coastal areas of Malindi, Mombasa, Kilifi, and Diani were subject to prostitution. Most of the prostitutes in Kenya are aged 9 to 18. The Ministry of Gender and Child Affairs employed 400 child protection officers in 2009. The causes of child labor include poverty, the lack of access to education and weak government institutions. Kenya has ratified Convention No. 81 on Labor Inspection in Industries and Convention No. 129 on Labor Inspection in Agriculture. Microfinance in Kenya 24 institutions offer business loans on a large scale, specific agriculture loans, education loans, and for any other purpose loans. Additionally there are Out of approximately 40 million Kenyans, about 14 million Kenyans are not able to receive financial service through formal loan application service and an additional 12 million Kenyans have no access to financial service institutions at all. Further, 1 million Kenyans are reliant on informal groups for receiving financial aid. Conditions for microfinance products Demographics Kenya had a population of approximately 48 million people in January 2017. Kenya has a young population, with 73% of residents aged below 30 years because of rapid population growth, from 2.9 million to 40 million inhabitants over the last century. Kenya's capital, Nairobi, is home to Kibera, one of the world's largest slums. The shanty town is believed to house between 170,000 and 1 million locals. The UNHCR base in Dadaab in the north also currently houses around 500,000 people. Ethnic groups Kenya has a diverse population that includes most major ethno-racial and linguistic groups found in Africa. There are an estimated 47 different communities, with Bantus, 67%, and Nilots, 30% constituting the majority of local residents. Cushitic groups also form a small ethnic minority, as do Arabs, Indians, and Europeans. According to the Kenya National Bureau of Statistics KNBS, Kenya has a total population of 38,610,097 inhabitants. The largest native ethnic groups are the Kikuyu, 6,622,576, Luya, 5,338,666, Kalanchin, 4,967,328, Luo, 4,044,440, Kamba, 3,893,157, Somalis, 3,510,757, Kisi, 2,205,669, Michikenda, 1,960,574, Meru, 1,658,108, Turkana, 988,592, and Maasai, 841,622. The northeastern province of Kenya, formerly known as NFD, is predominantly inhabited by the indigenous ethnic Somalis. Foreign rooted populations include Somalis, from Somalia, Kenyan Arabs, Asians, and Europeans. Languages 
Kenya's various ethnic groups typically speak their mother tongues within their own communities. The two official languages, English and Swahili, are used in varying degrees of fluency for communication with other populations. English is widely spoken in commerce, schooling and government. Peary urban and rural dwellers are less multilingual, with many in rural areas speaking only their native languages. British English is primarily used in Kenya. Additionally, a distinct local dialect, Kenyan English, is used by some communities and individuals in the country, and contains features unique to it that were derived from local Bantu languages, such as Kishwahili and Kikuyu. It has been developing since colonization and also contains certain elements of American English. Shung is a Kishwahili based cant spoken in some urban areas. Primarily consisting of a mixture of Kishwahili and English, it is an example of linguistic code switching. There are a total of 69 languages spoken in Kenya. Most belong to two broad language families, Niger Congo, Bantu branch, and Nilo Saharan, Nilotic branch spoken by the country's Bantu and Nilotic populations, respectively. The Cushitic and Arab ethnic minorities speak languages belonging to the separate Afroasiatic family, with the Indian and European residents speaking languages from the Indo-European family. Urban Centers Religion The majority of Kenyans are Christian, 83%, of whom 47.7% are Protestant and 23.5% are Roman Catholic. The Presbyterian Church of East Africa has 3 million followers in Kenya and surrounding countries. There are smaller conservative reformed churches, the Africa Evangelical Presbyterian Church, the Independent Presbyterian Church in Kenya, and the Reformed Church of East Africa. Orthodox Christianity counts 621,200 adherents. Kenya has by far the highest number of Quakers of any country in the world, with around 146,300 members. The only Jewish synagogue in the country is located in Nairobi. Islam is the second largest religion, comprising 15% of the population. 60% of Kenyan Muslims live in the coastal region, comprising 50% of the total population there, while the upper part of Kenya's eastern region is home to 10% of the country's Muslims, where they constitute the majority religious group. Doubt indigenous beliefs are practiced by 1.7% of the population, although many self-identifying Christians and Muslims maintain some traditional beliefs and customs. Non-religious Kenyans make up 2.4% of the population. Kenya has one of Africa's largest Hindu populations, around 300,000, mostly of Indian origin. It also hosts among the largest number of adherents of the Baha'i faith, 430,000, about 1% of the population. There is also a small Buddhist community. Health Kenya's private sector is one of the most advanced in sub-Saharan Africa and the private healthcare segment is larger than the public and non-profit sectors combined in terms of facilities and personnel. Private healthcare providers are a mixture of self-employed, employed and moonlighting professionals or quacks who together are the main healthcare providers in the country. According to a World Bank report, nearly half of the poorest 20% of Kenyans use a private health facility when a child is sick. Private healthcare professionals must operate within licensed premises and usually operate as small and medium-sized clinics and hospitals and are largely preferred for their accessibility, strong brands, value addition and personalized patient-focused care in contrast to the highly bureaucratic and minimalist mass-oriented evidence-based care provided in the largely moribund public health facilities. Bogged down by inefficiency, the government and donor agencies have increasingly channeled many social and public health services through the more flexible and efficient private practitioners via various programs covering medical legal services, emergency medical care, immunization, cancer screening, HIV AIDS and TB control and treatment, and safe motherhood among others under the public-private partnership PPP, framework. Private health care facilities are diverse and cater for all economic groups. Hospitals such as the Aga Khan Hospital and the Mombasa Hospital are comparable to many preferred hospitals in the developed world but are expensive and accessible only to the rich and the insured. A large black market composed of illegal medical facilities, quacks and counterfeit drugs exists all over the country and operates freely competing directly with licensed healthcare providers. All registered medical facilities are subjected to regular supervisory and supportive visits from a joint multi cadre team of health officials from the county government and national regulatory bodies in order to meet the legal threshold of the Fair Administrative Action Act.
2015 and may choose to undergo additional supportive and quality assurance and improvement processes by operating under a social franchise such as the joint government donor-funded Tons of Family Network. The control of medical practice by laymen through limited liability companies, county governments and other artificial legal entities is widespread and largely tolerated unlike other countries where medical affairs are strictly handled by medical professionals. The health sector and health facilities are not protected by any special laws and are prone to mismanagement with health workers frequently being subjected to verbal, emotional and physical abuse by patients and administrators alike. Private health facilities are diverse highly dynamic and difficult to classify unlike public health facilities which are easily grouped in classes that consist of community-based, level I, services which are run by community health workers, dispensaries, level II facilities, which are run by nurses, health centers, level III facilities, which are run by clinical officers, sub-county hospitals, level IV facilities, which may be run by a clinical officer or a medical officer, county hospitals, level V facilities, which may be run by a medical officer or a medical practitioner, and national referral hospitals, level by facilities, which are run by fully qualified medical practitioners, consultants and subspecialists. Nurses are by far the largest group of frontline healthcare providers in all sectors followed by clinical officers, medical officers and medical practitioners. According to the Kenya National Bureau of Statistics, in 2011 there were 65,000 qualified nurses registered in the country, 8,600 clinical officers and 7,000 doctors for the population of 43 million people. These figures from official registers include those who have died or left the profession hence the actual number of these workers may be lower. Traditional healers, herbalists, witch doctors and faith healers, are readily available trusted and widely consulted as practitioners of first or last choice by both rural and urban dwellers. Despite major achievements in the health sector, Kenya still faces many challenges. The life expectancy estimate has dropped to approximately 55 years in 2009, five years below 1990 levels. The infant mortality rate is high at approximately 44 deaths per 1,000 children in 2012. The WHO estimated in 2011 that only 42% of births were attended by a skilled health professional. Diseases of poverty directly correlate with the country's economic performance and wealth distribution. Half of Kenyans live below the poverty level. Preventable diseases like malaria, HIV AIDS, pneumonia, diarrhea, and malnutrition are the biggest burden, major child killers, and responsible for much morbidity, weak policies, corruption. Inadequate health workers, weak management and poor leadership in the public health sector are largely to blame. According to 2009 estimates, hiv aids prevalence is about 6.3% of the adult population. However, the 2011 UN AIDS report suggests that the HIV epidemic may be improving in Kenya, as HIV prevalence is declining among young people, ages 15 to 24, and pregnant women. Kenya had an estimated 15 million cases of malaria in 2006. Women The total fertility rate in Kenya is estimated to be 4.49 children per woman in 2012. According to a 2008-09 survey by the Kenyan government, the total fertility rate was 4.6% and the contraception usage rate among married women was 46%. Maternal mortality is high, partly because of female genital mutilation with about 27% of women having undergone it. This practice is however on the decline as the country becomes more modernized, and the practice was also banned in the country in 2011. Women were economically empowered before colonialization. By colonial land alienation, women lost access and control of land. They became more economically dependent on men. A colonial order of gender emerged where the male dominated the female. Median age at first marriage increases with increasing education. Rape, defilement and battering are not always seen as serious crimes. Reports of sexual assault are not always taken seriously. Education Children attend nursery school, or kindergarten in the private sector until they are 5 years old. This lasts 1 to 3 years, KG1, KG2 and KG3, and is financed privately because there has been no government policy regarding it until recently. Basic formal education starts at age 6 years and lasts 12 years consisting of 8 years in primary school and 4 years in high school or secondary school. Primary school is free in public schools and those attending can join a vocational youth slash village polytechnic or make their own arrangements for an apprenticeship program and learn a trade such as tailoring, 
carpentry, motor vehicle repair, bricklaying and masonry for about two years. Those who complete high school can join a polytechnic or other technical college and study for three years, or proceed directly to the university and study for four years. Graduates from the polytechnics and colleges can then join the workforce and later obtain a specialized higher diploma qualification after a further one to two years of training, or join the university, usually in the second or third year of their respective course. The higher diploma is accepted by many employers in place of a bachelor's degree and direct or accelerated admission to postgraduate studies is possible in some universities. Public universities in Kenya are highly commercialized institutions and only a small fraction of qualified high school graduates are admitted on limited government sponsorship into programs of their choice. Most are admitted into the social sciences, which are cheap to run, or as self-sponsored students paying the full cost of their studies. Most qualified students who miss out opt for middle-level diploma programs in public or private universities, colleges, and polytechnics. 38.5% of the Kenyan adult population is illiterate. There are very wide regional disparities, for example, Nairobi had the highest level of literacy, 87.1%, compared to northeastern province, the lowest, at 8.0%. Preschool, which targets children from age 3 to 5, is an integral component of the education system and is a key requirement for admission to Standard 1, first grade. At the end of primary education, Pupils sit the Kenya Certificate of Primary Education, KCPE, which determines those who proceed to secondary school or vocational training. The result of this examination is needed for placement at secondary school. Primary school is for students aged 6 sevenths minus 13 14 years. For those who proceed to the secondary level, there is a national examination at the end of Form 4, the Kenya Certificate of Secondary Education, KCSE which determines those proceeding to the universities, other professional training or employment. Students sit examinations in eight subjects of their choosing. However, English, Kishwahili and mathematics are compulsory subjects. The Kenya Universities and Colleges Central Placement Service, CUPS, formerly the Joint Admissions Board, JAB, is responsible for selecting students joining the public universities. Other than the public schools, there are many private schools, mainly in urban areas. Similarly, there are a number of international schools catering to various overseas educational systems. Despite its impressive commercial approach and interests in the country, Kenya's academia and higher education system is notoriously rigid and disconnected from the needs of the local labor market and is widely blamed for the high number of unemployable and half-baked university graduates who struggle to fit in the modern workplace. Culture the culture of Kenya consists of multiple traditions. Kenya has no single prominent culture that identifies it. It instead consists of the various cultures of the country's different communities. Notable populations include the Swahili on the coast, several other Bantu communities in the central and western regions, and Nilotic communities in the northwest. The Maasai culture is well known to tourism, despite constituting a relatively small part of Kenya's population. They are renowned for their elaborate upper body adornment and jewelry. Additionally, Kenya has an extensive music, television and theater scene. Media Kenya has a number of media outlets that broadcast domestically and globally. They cover news, business, sports and entertainment. Popular Kenyan newspapers include Television stations based in Kenya include All of these terrestrial channels are transmitted by a DVB-T2 digital TV signal. Literature. Ngugi Wadiango is one of the best known writers of Kenya. His novel, Weep Not, Child, is an illustration of life in Kenya during the British occupation. The story details the effects of the Mau Mau on the lives of Kenyans. Its combination of themes, colonialism, education, and love, helped to make it one of the best known novels in Africa. M.G. Vasanji's 2003 novel The In Between World of Vikram Lal won the Giller Prize in 2003. It is the fictional memoir of a Kenyan of Indian heritage and his family as they adjust to the changing political climates in colonial and post-colonial Kenya. Since 2003, the literary journal Kwani has been publishing Kenyan contemporary literature. Additionally, Kenya has also been nurturing emerging versatile authors such as Paul Kipkumba, Kip Wendui, Kibiwat, who demonstrate Pan-African outlook, see Africa in China's 21st century, in search of a strategy, 2017. Music. 
Kenya has a diverse assortment of popular music forms, in addition to multiple types of folk music based on the variety over 40 regional languages. The drums are the most dominant instrument in popular Kenyan music. Drum beats are very complex and include both native rhythm and imported ones, especially the Congolese kavacha rhythm. Popular Kenyan music usually involves the interplay of multiple parts, and more recently, showy guitar solos as well. There are also a number of local hip-hop artists, including Juwakali Afropop bands such as Saudi Sol, and musicians who do local genres like Benga, such as Akathi. Lyrics are most often in Kishwahili or English. There is also some emerging aspect of Lingala borrowed from Congolese musicians. Lyrics are also written in local languages. Urban radio generally only plays English music, though there also exist a number of vernacular radio stations. Zili's Openwa is a genre of local urban music that was recorded in the 1960s, 70s and 80s by musicians such as Doidi Kabaka, Fadhili William, and Sukuma Binangaro, and is particularly revered and enjoyed by older people, having been popularized by the Kenya Broadcasting Corporation's Kishwahili Service, formerly called Voice of Kenya Orbak. The Isakuti is a vigorous dance performed by the Luya sub-tribes to the beat of a traditional drum called the Isakuti during many occasions such as the birth of a child, marriage and funerals. Other traditional dances include the Ohangla among the Luo, Nul among the Mijikenda, Mugidi among the Kikuyu and Tarab among the Swahili. Additionally, Kenya has a growing Christian gospel music scene. Prominent local gospel musicians include the Kenyan Boys Choir. Benga music has been popular since the late 1960s, especially in the area around Lake Victoria. The word benga is occasionally used to refer to any kind of pop music. Bass, guitar and percussion are the usual instruments. Sports Kenya is active in several sports, among them cricket, rallying, football, rugby union, field hockey and boxing. The country is known chiefly for its dominance in middle distance and long distance athletics having consistently produced Olympic and Commonwealth Games champions in various distance events, especially in 800 meters, 1,500 meters, 3,000 meters steeplechase, 5,000 meters, 10,000 meters and the marathon. Kenyan athletes, particularly Colin Jean, continue to dominate the world of distance running, although competition from Morocco and Ethiopia has reduced this supremacy. Kenya's best-known athletes included the four-time women's Boston Marathon winner and two-time world champion Catherine Dariba, 800 meters world record holder David Rudisha, former marathon world record holder Paul Turgut, and John Ngugi. Kenya won several medals during the Beijing Olympics, six gold, four silver and four bronze, making it Africa's most successful nation in the 2008 Olympics. New athletes gained attention, such as Pamela Jalimo the women's 800 meters gold medalist who went on to win the IAAF Golden League jackpot, and Samuel Wanjiru who won the men's marathon. Retired Olympic and Commonwealth Games champion Kipchoge Kano helped usher in Kenya's ongoing distance dynasty in the 1970s and was followed by Commonwealth champion Henry Rono's spectacular string of world record performances. Lately, there has been controversy in Kenyan athletics circles, with the defection of a number of Kenyan athletes to represent other countries, chiefly Bahrain and Qatar. The Kenyan Ministry of Sports has tried to stop the defections, but they have continued anyway, with Bernard Lagat the latest, choosing to represent the United States. Most of these defections occur because of economic or financial factors. Decisions by the Kenyan government to tax athletes' earnings may also be a reason for defection. Some elite Kenyan runners who cannot qualify for their country's strong national team find it easier to qualify by running for other countries. Kenya has been a dominant force in women's volleyball within Africa, with both the clubs and the national team winning various continental championships in the past decade. The women's team has competed at the Olympics and World Championships though without any notable success. Cricket is another popular sport, also ranking as the most successful team sport. Kenya has competed in the Cricket World Cup since 1996. They upset some of the world's best teams and reached the semi-finals of the 2003 tournament. They won the inaugural World Cricket League Division 1 hosted in Nairobi and participated in the World T20. They also participated in the ICC Cricket World Cup 2011. Their current captain is Rake Patel. Kenya's represented by Lucas Onyango as a professional rugby league player who plays with the English club Oldham. Besides the former Super League team, he has played for the Witness Vikings and Rugby Union with the Sale Sharks. Rugby Union is increasing in popularity, 
especially with the annual Safari Sevens Tournament. The Kenya Sevens team ranked ninth in IRB Sevens World Series for the 2006 season. In 2016, the team beat Fiji at the Singapore Sevens Finals, making Kenya the second African nation after South Africa to win a World Series championship. Kenya was also a regional powerhouse in football. However, its dominance has been eroded by wrangles within the now-defunct Kenya Football Federation, leading to a suspension by FIFA which was lifted in March 2007. In the Motor Rallying Arena, Kenya is home to the world-famous Safari Rally, commonly acknowledged as one of the toughest rallies in the world. It was a part of the World Rally Championship for many years until its exclusion after the 2002 event owing to financial difficulties. Some of the best rally drivers in the world have taken part in and won the rally, such as Bjorn Waldegard, Hanu Mikola, Tommy Mackinnon, Shakar Mehta, Carlos Sainz and Colin McRae. Although the rally still runs annually as part of the Africa Rally Championship, the organizers are hoping to be allowed to rejoin the World Rally Championship in the next couple of years. Nairobi has hosted several major continental sports events, including the FIBA Africa Championship 1993 where Kenya's national basketball team finished in the top four, its best performance to date. Cuisine Kenyans generally have three meals in a day, breakfast in the morning, kiam shikainiwa, lunch in the afternoon, chakula cha makana, and supper in the evening, chakula cha jioni or known simply as cha jio. In between, they have the 10 o'clock tea. Chai Yasane, and 4 p.m. tea, Chai Yasakumi. Breakfast is usually tea or porridge with bread, chapati, mahamri, boiled sweet potatoes or yams. Githeri is a common lunchtime dish in many households while ugali with vegetables, sour milk, mursik, meat, fish or any other stew is generally eaten by much of the population for lunch or supper. Regional variations and dishes also exist. In western Kenya, among the Luo, Fish is a common dish, among the Kalenjin who dominate much of the Rift Valley region, Mursik, sour milk, is a major drink. In cities such as Nairobi, there are fast food restaurants, including Stairs, KFC, and Subway. There are also many fish and ship shops, Subway. There are also many fish and ship shops, Subway. There are also many fish and ship shops, Subway. There are also many fish and ship shops, Subway. There are also many fish and ship shops, Subway. There are also many fish and ship shops, Subway. There are also many fish and ship shops, Subway. There are also many fish and ship shops, Subway. There are also